What's up everyone, I'm back with a video focusing on Diona, who I personally think is one of the best 4 star units in the game. With everyone being able to claim a free Diona from the Energy Amplifier event that's wrapping up, and Diona currently being featured on the Zhongli rerun banner, I figured it would be decent timing to make an updated Diona build guide. Diona has to be one of the best gifts miHoYo has given to free-to-play players for two reasons. First, the free-to-play cast lacks in the healing and shielding department, and Diona provides both in her kit. I've always been a huge advocate of shields, and with the newer enemies introduced in the recent patches, the importance of shields seems to be emphasized more than ever. Second, for the current Spiral Abyss, Diona works wonders against both the Abyss Lectors and the Abyss Heralds, so for anyone struggling with these enemies, look no further than Diona. Anyways, there have been some new introductions to the game since Diona's initial release in Genshin Impact's version 1.1, and I'm here to cover your best artifact and weapon options for Diona, updated for the current patch 1.5. Without further ado, let's get this guide rolling. Okay, starting off with a super brief breakdown of Diona's abilities, her elemental ability can be used by either tapping or holding to fire off 2 or 5 icy paws respectively. The ability creates a shield based on Diona's max HP regardless of holding or tapping the ability, and each icy paw that hits a target extends the duration of the shield by a fixed amount. The shield generated by holding the ability has an extra 75% damage absorption and an extra 250% cryo absorption. With Diona's first ascension talent, any character with Diona's shield will also have their movement speed increased by 10% and their stamina consumption decreased by 10%. As for Diona's elemental burst, she drops a field of cryo where enemies within the radius will take continual cryo damage while allies get continual healing. The damage is not based on Diona's max HP, but the healing is. With Diona's second ascension talent, any enemy that enters Diona's elemental burst will also have their attack decrease by 10% for 15 seconds. When you combine this attack decrease with Diona's healing and shielding, it should be pretty evident that Diona can easily make sure that your team stays healthy. Her base kit is pretty straightforward, so let's move into constellations now. I'm happy to say that Diona's early constellations are definitely worth shooting for if you're planning to build Diona. Starting with C1, this is probably her most important constellation that makes her overall gameplay much better, and this constellation grants Diona 15 energy once her elemental burst ends. While it doesn't seem like much on paper, Diona actually suffers a little bit from energy problems. So from a personal experience, going from C0 to C1 definitely had the most impact out of any Diona constellations. C2 is also a super good constellation like C1, but it's not as game changing in my opinion. C2 increases both the damage absorption and the ability damage of her elemental ability. Also, if you're a frequent co-op player with C2, you can also grant the rest of your teammates shields, so that's something that you can look out for. Unfortunately, C4 is absolutely useless. This constellation reduces charge for Diana's aim shots by 60% when she's in the radius of her elemental burst. If this buff applied to all party members, it would undoubtedly be broken, however this is exclusive to Diona and we never really use her for charge shots, so it becomes a constellation that gets pushed aside. Lastly, we have C6, which most people consider to be Diona's best constellation. When a character falls below 50% HP, stands in Diona's elemental burst, their healing bonus is increased by 30%. If their HP is above 50%, their elemental mastery is increased by 200% instead. The main grabbing point here is the 200 EM, and 200 EM is nothing to scoff at. This is really Diona's only offensive team buff in her kit, so I understand why many players value this constellation a ton. Moving into artifacts, 1.5 has actually introduced a new artifact set that Diona actually appreciates, so her artifact options have changed slightly since her release, but overall things are still very simple. Diona has no real best in slot artifact, but instead what you run on her depends on what you need for your team. With this in mind, there is not just one, but two different artifact combinations that I want you to consider when building Diona. The first combination consists of the 2 set Tenacity of the Millith and the 2 set Maiden's Beloved. You should choose this particular combination if you're looking for maximum shield strength and large heals. 
Tenacity of the Millith is the newest artifact addition to Genshin Impact, and the two set is super useful for Diona since all of her support capabilities rely on HP scaling. The four set is not that useful for Diona though, so the other two set that we opt for when running Tenacity of the Millith is the two set Maiden's Beloved. The second combination that I want you to consider is the 4 set Noblesse Oblige. You want to choose this set if you have enough shielding and healing, or if you need more damage on your team. Unfortunately, Diona's Elemental Burst cooldown is longer than the 12 second buff that the Noblesse set provides, but overall this set is still stellar on Diona. An example of where you want to choose the 4 set Noblesse is if you're running a Freeze team. Oftentimes, Freeze teams lack a little bit of damage compared to other popular teams because they aren't taking advantage of elemental reactions that actually deal damage. So, having a 4 set Noblesse can partially make up for this by providing the team extra attack. There's one more set that I want to mention, and that's the 4 set Maiden's Beloved. Prior to patch 1.5, this was a popular pick for Diona, but here's my reasoning as to why you should try to choose the 2 set Tenacity of the Millet and the 2 set Maiden's Beloved over the 4 set Maiden's Beloved. Overall, the 20% HP from the Tenacity set is more valuable than the extra healing effectiveness from the 4 set Maidens. Even though the HP% percent might result in slightly less healing than the 4 set Maidens, it provides benefit to both your shielding and healing power. Diona's healing is already pretty good at a base level, so I'd rather have that extra shield power than the extra healing effectiveness that could potentially go to waste if you already have a party that's sitting at max HP. Of course, you can still opt for the 4 set Maidens if you have some great Maidens pieces. There's absolutely nothing wrong with running the set on Diona even after the 1.5 update. As for artifact stats, things are really dependent on what your overall stats will look like. For the Hourglass slot, you have two choices with Energy Recharge or HP Percent. You're probably asking, well, how do I choose between these two stats? My general rule of thumb is if you can get 190-200% to 200 Energy Recharge through Artifact Substats and Weapon Stats, then you can choose HP Percent. On the other hand, if you don't have any good Energy Recharge Substats on your Artifacts, or if you don't have Constellation 1 to help with that Energy Generation, then you can consider Energy Recharge in the Hourglass slot. Next, the Goblet is always going to want HP% percent, and lastly the Headpiece slot is HP% percent or Healing Bonus. Similar to the Tenacity of the Millith vs Maiden's Beloved that I discussed previously, if you want an overall boost to Diona's kit, take HP%, percent. but if you want tons of healing, take the Healing Bonus in the Circlet slot. As for your substats, your only priorities are going to be Energy Recharge, HP%, percent, and Flat HP. This substat focus should make finding artifacts for Diona pretty easy compared to building actual DPS characters. Weapons are the easiest thing when it comes to building Diona, and the name of the game when it comes to Diona's weapon arsenal is definitely Energy Recharge. If the weapon has Energy Recharge, it's usable on Diona. Beforehand, closer to Diona's release, there were only two weapons for her, but version 1.4 has introduced a third weapon option. Anyway, starting off with your first option, we have the Sacrificial Bow, which in my opinion is her best in slot. This weapon is ridiculous on Diona and it solves her energy problems to a T. Each icy paw that Diona releases with her ability has a separate chance to proc the weapon's passive, meaning that you reliably are able to reset your ability cooldown despite the low percentage chance at lower refinement ranks. Being able to cast your ability twice, of course, helps you with your energy generation. Option number 2 is your free to play option and is pretty much just as good as the sacrificial bow. The bow I'm talking about is the Favonius War Bow. This weapon does have a lower base attack and higher energy recharge scaling compared to the Sacrificial Bow, which is exactly what we want in a bow for Diona. Similar to the Sacrificial Bow, the passive is also easier to proc on Diona because she has multiple hits on her elemental ability. Overall, this is a stellar weapon on Diona. Last but not least, we have the newest energy recharge bow, LG for the end. Believe it or not, this 5-star weapon is actually slightly worse than the previous 4-star bows I just mentioned. The reason for this is that the passive of LG for the end takes a while for Diona to fully utilize. Her elemental burst hits for an interval much slower than the 0.2 seconds mentioned in the weapon passive. What this means is that it will take a while before she can grant the party members the buff that this bow is built around. If you have this bow laying around, Diona can definitely use it, but chances are you'll have a spare Sacrificial Bow or Favonius War Bow laying around, 
If that's the case, opt for the previous two weapons. That wraps up the guide portion of the video, and now I'll quickly show off my own Diona in case any of you guys want to see an example of how she should be built. I actually have Diona fully artifacted and leveled on both my main account and my free to play account, so I've decided to move over to my free to play account for showcasing my build. The reason being is because my main account has an R5 Sacrificial Bow and a C6 Diona, and that can be pretty unattainable for many players. Hopefully my baby account will provide a much more attainable benchmark for those trying to compare their own Diona builds with mine. Enough rambling though, starting off with her basic stats, you can take a look at her HP right here. If we move deeper into the hidden stats, we could take a look at her healing bonus and her energy recharge. For her weapon, we're running the free-to-play option, the Favonius Warbow at refinement rank 1. And as for artifacts, we are running the 4-set Noblest Oblige. As for artifact stats, you could take a look at them right here. This is the flower the feather, the hourglass, the goblet, and lastly the headpiece slot. As for constellations, thanks to the energy amplifier event, I've managed to get my Diona up to C2. And as for her talents, we have 2, 6, and 6. And that should cover everything about my Diona's build. With that, it's time to wrap up the video. There is no showcase part of the video this time around since Diona gameplay is really just switching her in to shield and placing down her elemental burst. However, if you are curious as to how Diona fits in the team, there will be a link in the description to an unlisted video that I made that features an all 4 star freeze team with Diona. The team managed to get me a 3 star clear against the Abyss Lectors in Spiral Abyss Floor 12 Chamber 3, so again, if you're interested in that, link will be in the description below. Other than that, if you thought this guide was helpful, be sure to support both the video and the channel, and it's the same as always. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.